everybody, it's Mike with VB Aquatics, and I'm about to show you how to make a pond for just $50. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so you just heard me tell you that you can make a pond for just $50. Now, I'm going to make this even crazier for you. Not only can you make a pond for $50, that'll include the fish and the live plants. We're going to start out with this cheap little, you know, $7 plant from Lowe's. The 20 gallon pond liner. Uh, was $18. The basket there for our plant was $3. Uh, the fountain kit is $20. So tools we're going to need for this project. One is going to be a, a drill. Uh, just your plain old drill from Walmart will work. Two zip ties, very simple, and some drill bits. And clearly the baby monitor because the wife is in the shower and the baby's all alone. But look at him, so cute. But back to business here, uh, a drill, two zip ties, drill bits, real simple. All right, so what we're gonna do with this basket, these two zip ties and this, we're gonna put the basket like this. Now this is gonna do multiple things for us. It's gonna allow us to put the plant in and not fully submerge it, because that is not an aquatic plant that I'm gonna be putting in here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes right around this area right here. Nani? And that'll allow us to zip tie the basket to the pond. Uh, that will also allow water, I'm going to make the holes a little big, to flow out and not overflow when it rains and I'll lose all the fish. So, and I can't wait to show you guys what kind of fish we're going to be putting in here. They're awesome. So we messed up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pretend that this hole doesn't exist um, and move on. So the zip tie fits through this hole perfectly and allows water to go through. You can see there's plenty of movement there. I used a one quarter inch bit in my drill. Uh, I didn't record drilling because, well, I assume you guys know how to do that. If you don't, if you want me to make a video on how to drill, uh, let me know. But at any rate, the way that I got the distance of which these holes should be is by placing the basket inside. Now the first one you can put anywhere because it's a circular object, you don't have to measure it. The second one, however, is a little bit tricky. You just put your finger in the corner and put your thumb on the other side like you're pinching your thumb and finger together. That's how you know they're lined up. Simple. And I know you guys don't want to watch a video on my arm. You know what? I'm just going to record my arm for the rest of the video. Now we have that basket in place. See, I had to bend the plastic a little bit uh, because my zip ties were kind of small. That's all right. Uh, it is an $18 liner. We're now going to go ahead and unbox the Smart Pond container fountain. Now, none of these products in this video are sponsored in any way. Uh, this is my very first YouTube video, so I don't have sponsors or anything like that yet, but I will. So this is just what I find at my local Lowe's here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this with one hand, awkwardly, because it's kind of difficult. Alright, what do we got? There's the stats on this pump here. It's essentially just a water pump. Instructions. Uh, it's interesting. The second language is French and not Spanish. That's a bit intriguing. All right, so we have some miscellaneous parts here. It looks like we have some different heads for different things here. Different configurations. Uh, you know, I'm not going to read the instructions. I'd rather read y'all's comments about what's going on here. We have this little. All right, I panic. Panic attack. Don't worry about it. We're good. We're good. All right. Uh, rip. Oh, okay, I do believe these are the things that allow, that I can put underneath of it. Uh, and here's the air pump right there. Uh, it's really simple, or oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, water pump. I'm saying air pump, but it actually pushes water, not air. Got some zip tabs in there I have to cut here, so this is going to go in the bottom like this. If I don't break it before I can actually use it. 
and essentially, I'll probably just put it right there. It looks like it fits right there perfectly. Uh, right, and then it's going to push water up and create a fountain effect. And what that will essentially do for the fish, now this isn't needed for plants only, but because I'm going to be putting fish in here, we need to aerate the pond. All right, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about this pump here because I've found some pretty interesting stuff out. So it does come with three different heads that you can use. Uh, one with little lips there I'm assuming that's gonna make the water come out and uh, have a certain pattern to it and then this one has larger lips to it so it'll probably make that pattern a little bit more amplified and then this one looks like it's gonna come out almost like a hose like a sprayer um, so we'll see we're gonna play with those that's pretty cool but here's the coolest part about this so I only bought this for aeration right I, I didn't think you know I'm gonna use the plant for filtration get some of the nitrates and nitrates out of the water and that's that kind of thing however what's really cool about this so check this out if you look really closely that is a coarse sponge filter inside of this thing now isn't that awesome now the that is probably just to keep debris from getting into the motor and things like that and getting electric into the electrical components down there but What's super awesome is that that's actually going to act as a biological uh, conduit for for beneficial bacteria to grow on, which is dope. Um, I don't know how I'm going to clean it yet. I haven't figured out how to take it apart. I don't know if it's very easy, um, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna find a way here. We're gonna find a way. So. Uh, but I'm going to move on here, get this thing rolling for you guys. But I just wanted to let you guys see that. That's awesome. Uh, and then we're going to be moving to the fish here soon. So. Yeah, yeah. So now we're just filling the pond up. This is only a 20 gallon pond, so it's not going to take very long. I want you to notice that I just put the plant in there with inside of its original bucket that it came in with its soil. Now, the reason I'm doing that is, one, I don't want to stress the plant out too much uh, by changing its environment too quickly. Uh, the other is I don't know what kind of substrate I'm going to use yet. If I'm even going to go put substrate in this pond um, and what substrate I would use in there or if I need any. I read about this plant. It is a. I just remember the name of it. Golden Pathos. Pothos? Um, and essentially, it can it can be submerged partially. The it, the roots don't care if they're submerged um, and have consistent water, and it will also grow out and provide plenty of shade for when it's really, really hot. Uh, and they have their own root systems that grow from each stem. You see it, we get real close right here. This is a root right here, so, and it's coming out of the leaves. So it'll grow and when it needs water, it, uh, it essentially will get the nutrients from the water by growing roots straight from where the leaves are branching off at. So that's pretty cool. Um, we're gonna see how it does in this heat though. It does get pretty hot out here. So we'll see how that goes, guys. Looks like it's about filled up. So you can see right there, that's where the water's gonna come out of from that pump. So we're gonna plug that in as soon as this water's done filling up. All right, so you see I'll have the water where I want it now. I also chose this location because look where there is a power outlet right there. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our pump and see what happens. Uh, 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 hold on. 20 minutes later. All right, everybody. So we're back at Lowe's. Um, as you can see, I'm just going to take this moment to remind everybody that projects don't always go as planned the first time. Uh, in fact, they almost never do. So, no reason to get mad. We're just going to go inside, exchange this out. The pump was dead on arrival. Tried on multiple sockets. I thought my socket was bad, but tested it. It's working just fine. So, I'm going to go exchange this and we'll meet back at the pond. Hey everybody. So, we're back home and I wanted to have this up and running. As you can see, I don't. Um, the new one does work. I plugged it into another outlet and it worked. Oh, hi Zoe, we have some good news. Say hi to Zoe, everybody. She doesn't care. All right, so uh, it does work. However, 
my outlet actually doesn't work properly. It's not uh, breaker tripped as I thought. Um, so inside, when I push this this way, hey look, it turns on. Push, turns on. So essentially what I'm gonna have to do is replace this outlet here. Now I don't recommend people doing this on their own unless they know what they're doing, uh, hire an electrician. Um, I've done it quite a few times myself, so I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. Uh, I am running out of light, so we might have to finish this tomorrow. Uh, you can't eat this water, though. So. Alright, so I'll, I'll let you guys know what happens. Uh, you'll either see me later tonight or tomorrow. She's so gorgeous. Okay. So it's the next morning. We ran into a major issue with my electrical system. Essentially, there's a multi-thousand dollar issue, possibly, with my electrical panel in my house. Uh, th that's the reason why I put the maybe not in the uh, thumbnail there, but we're gonna move on. We have to do right by the fish uh, that I did purchase for this project, and we have to get this thing rolling for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I did to work around the electrical issue that we have. I might make a video about that specifically, and then I'm going to show you guys the fish. So stay tuned, we're going to finish this pond up and hopefully have this video out by today. Alright, so to overcome the electrical issues we have currently, I've had to run an extension cord from my garage outlet out here to the back. So we're going to go ahead and do what we tried to do yesterday and plug in the pump let's see what happens guys I'll try not to do this with one hand oh look at that that's gorgeous get a nice slow panoramic panoramic view wow look at that dragonfly right there it's already bringing in it's already attracting wildlife so that pump is just enough water disturbance it's creating just enough water disturbance to aerate the water provide oxygen for the fish that's gorgeous the plants doing well overnight as you can see um, so yeah we're gonna keep moving along here I'm gonna show you guys what we need to do to get this water ready for the fish. Almost all public water sources contain chlorine and chloramine. Um, so we always use prime whenever we're adding new water that will contain fish or plants. Um, so for 20 gallons, one cap is plenty enough. And we're just going to put that in there. And then what that does is that detoxifies the chlorine. We're going to switch that around a little bit. Now there's other purposes for that too, for uh, cycle tanks. If you have an ammonia spike or anything like that, it'll detoxify the ammonia for 24 hours. The nitrites, nitrates, the, all the different bad bacteria that can affect your fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harden the water a little bit. Um, that's because the environment that these minnows have been living in has been hard water. So I don't want to transition, transition them too much because um, there's going to be a temperature change, there's going to be an environment change. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this water exactly what I need it to be, closer to probably a 7.6 pH and a KH of around 8 to 11. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not going to videotape that or record that this time around. I'm going to show you guys how to do that, or Chris and I are going to show you guys how to do that at another point. I now have the fish outside to acclimate to the same temperature as the pond water. I did use acid and alkaline buffer to get the hardness of the water and the pH to where I want it. Now, I'm not going to explain how I did this in this video. It would take quite some time, and frankly, um, you need to figure out how to do this for the water that you have and for the fish that you have. So if you follow exactly what I did, 
you're not going to get the same results as me and it might not be good for the fish that you have and the environment that you have so um, you're going to have to research talk to your local fish store um, as to how to get the numbers that you need the metrics that you need for your water uh, the parameters that you need for your water and uh, yeah so that's all I had to say about that Now before I put the fish in here, I did throw in these little pond thermometers that I have to see the difference in temperature and to monitor that. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to take well over an hour to get the temperature correct. So I've checked the parameters of this tank and they're all good to go because of that seeded filter down there. So, And by seeded what I mean is there's enough beneficial bacteria to eliminate the ammonia and nitrites and it has enough nitrates um, to basically eliminate those two things so so oh, so essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same media and I'm gonna put it in the pond what that will allow me to do is add the minnows immediately um, well I say immediately within a few hours instead of you know waiting a month um, and as long as I monitor the parameters of the pond and make sure we don't see insane ammonia spikes, we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and throw this right in here, right next to, it's hard to see, right next to the, right next to the pond fountain. What that'll do is that'll cycle this pond much faster. It'll allow me to put these beautiful guys in there. So I just pulled the temperatures and they are very, very close. They're within two degrees. So it has been about two hours that they've been out here acclimating. I have put a couple more cups of water in from the pond into the bucket. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to get them in here safely and not transfer all that ammonia over. So. I'm gonna go grab a net. Look at Zoe. Look at Zoe stealing the camera. Look at Zoe stealing the camera. All right, so I have a clean net here. Go ahead and put it on the bucket. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm not pouring the water that they've been sitting in for more than 18 hours or so um, into the pond. I don't want to do that because they've been pooping in here and creating a lot of ammonia with no nitrate to get rid of it. So there's a lot of ammonia in this water that I do not want to transfer over to the pond. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. This is the safest way to do it. There we go. I might have missed a couple, but that's okay. Nope, nope, we got them all. Alright, so there they are. Look at these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish here. Gorgeous. Alright. It's not stretching out much longer here. And we're going to gently drop them in. Let them swim out here. down make sure nobody's stuck in the net beautiful look at that oh yeah there's plenty of room in there for them let's take a look at this look how gorgeous they look now they're gonna be a little stressed out at first and hide and they're gonna have they're gonna be able to hide underneath of that plant so that's another benefit of having the plant there. Then any, any kind of predators or anything try to come, they're gonna hide in the shade. So, well there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this pond uh, thermometer back in here. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't have a water on the camera yet. 
So I'm going to monitor this pond very closely for the next week, every single day. Make sure ammonia doesn't get out of control. Uh, make sure the temperatures aren't ridiculous. And we'll see how it goes. But there's, there's the finished project, everybody.